Hey guys, in this video, I'll be wrapping up 2020 or going into 2021, depends on when I get this uploaded, by uh, going over my entire collection and talking about them in kind of detail-ish. I'm going to try to make this fast. Depending on when this uploads, I'll hopefully be back and have a much better schedule because as my one or two subs might know, I have been struggling a little bit recently. It took me like four months to get my second video uploaded. I hope that does not happen with this. I'm going to get this done as soon as possible. So I'm going to make this quick. Here we go. So to start off my collection, we have my Rubik's 2x2. This is just a pretty basic Rubik's brand. It's pretty new because it does have the tiles, as you can see right here. It's not really anything special. There are definitely better 2x2s on the market, and I have a better 2x2 than this but this is the first two by two that I ever got. Now here we have an original Rubik's three by three. However, it's not that original because as you can see, it has these slits in the centerpieces, which basically means it was part of the speed cube set and it's pretty okay. It does catch or lock up when it, it turns, but it isn't terrible. I probably would not recommend this one exactly, even though it comes with all of the gear. But if you do want it as just a collector's item, then go for it, I guess. Here we have another Rubik's 3x3. This one is a little bit older because it does have the stickers and the old Rubik's logo. And it turns probably even worse than the other one. It's very stiff. You can feel the friction in between the pieces. Not that pleasant to turn. However, it is definitely a landmark for the Twisty Puzzle community. And I like it for that. You guys see this? Or wait, you don't see it yet? Oh, well, here it is. This is the uh, puzzle that has formerly held the title for the world's smallest Rubik's Cube. It has now been beaten. I believe it measures only 25 centimeters across, and it is very difficult to turn because of its size. And, of course, this green side just does not want to move. Why not choose this one? But just having this, this seems pretty hilarious to have in my collection not gonna lie and wrapping up this part of the video before we move on to what would be my main speed cubes if i actually did go to competitions we have the rubik's 4x4 once again with the tiles i definitely would like to get a rubik's 5x5 in the future and i'm going to try to get one this year as well as some other puzzles like the mefford's gear ship but for now this is what we have the, the middle layers don't turn terribly you can easily, well, not really. They do kind of stick in, stick out from each other. And the, the outer layers have this weird thing where you turn one layer and for some reason the other layer turns with it. I don't understand that. Okay, so moving into my main line of speed cues, if I actually did go to competition, they're going to be uh, way uh, better at performance than what I just had. So right now, this is the Chi Chi D. 2x2. Two two. It might be the Chi W, but this is a way better 2x2, two two, as you can see. I can easily do stuff like that. And this was what prompted me to learn Ortiga, and I actually got my time down pretty low, but I am still pretty slow at speed solving. I might need a little more practice. This is the Chi Warrior S. No, not Warrior S. Sail W. Sorry. 3x3, three three. and it was one of the older mains in my collection. I do really like it. I am turning it pretty slowly, though. It's definitely a very good speed cube, one that I would definitely recommend if you're on a budget. A lot of my main speed cubes are very inexpensive, except for, like, the next one that's kind of coming up. But overall, for what you're getting, I would say it is definitely worth the price. However, there are definitely better budget cubes coming on the market, like the Moyu... RS3 or the YJU Long V2M, which I do not have, though I would like to get those in the future. Here we have my main 4x4. This is the Moyu Aosu WRM 4x4, and as you might already tell, I absolutely love this thing. It's the only um, real speed cube I have in my collection that has, like, premium service. It has magnets in it. It just flows so smoothly, and this is one of the reasons why I like... 4x4 four four so much. You can definitely tell the inner layer magnets are a lot stronger. You can totally feel the click. But turning the outer layer magnets, you have to turn very slowly to feel the click because they're not as strong. 
and that's basically the way the 4x4 is. It's easily in contention for one of the best puzzles ever made, and it's one of my personal favorites. Here is the Qi Qi Zhang 5x5. The 5x5 actually is pretty good. It's what really got my 5x5 times low. I'm a little bit faster than I thought I was, but then again, I'm still pretty slow. However, this one, again, for what you're getting, I believe it's like 8 or $9 maybe. For what you're getting, more than worth it because this thing it performs pretty well, even though I have had a couple crooked stickers in the past. For what this is, I'm going to stick with it because I really like it. Now we're getting into where things start to get a little crazy. We're getting into the big boys here. This is the Chi Chi Fan 6x6, I believe that's what it's called. And I don't think there could be a better 6x6 on the market for, I believe, for it was under $20. It was somewhere in the, like, $14 to $18 range. For what this is, definitely make sure to get your hands on it at some point. For what it is, it actually works really well. It does lock up every now and then, as we just saw. However, I would definitely recommend this because the outer layers, well, just the puzzle itself is so smooth. It's probably the smoothest out of all the puzzles in my collection, which is why it's definitely worth getting your hands on if you have the chance. I need to speed this up. This is the Chi Chi Sing 7x7. You guys saw me open this up if you watched my last unboxing. Probably not. It wasn't even my last unboxing. But basically, this is the 7x7. And for a $15 7x7, this is easily worth it. And the 6x6 was $12. For a $15 7x7, I will say there is definitely better alternatives if you have more money. But... This is definitely the best alternative if you're on a budget, because I don't have a competition pyramid or skew just yet. Here is the Chi Chi Hang Mega Maze in black. This is another one that I unboxed in my last video. Same with the seven x seven and the two x two, which I forgot to mention. But this is a really good Mega Maze for eight dollars. I say this is probably the best alternative. It's got great performance. I really do like the way it turns. It feels really smooth. It is a little bit unstable when bo when all the layers get moving, but all you got to do is just turn the opposite layers to stable it out. Here we have another puzzle that I unboxed in my last video that I posted like literally a few days ago. This is the Chi Chi Fa Square One. For what it is, definitely make sure to get your hands on it because this is well worth it. Okay, moving on before we go into the all the different modifications I have, all the non-WCA puzzles I have. We have a bunch of just random stuff that I couldn't really find. I say random stuff, it's all competition items that I had left over. These are not my mains, but I still have them. So, first up, we have this really old dollar store, 3x3. I did put um, Speak Keep Shop, I believe it was Nebula or Galaxy Lube in there, and it's made the performance a lot better. It still can't corner cut in reverse, but I still really like the way it performs for what I did to it. I feel like at the time before I got the lube, I feel like it was pretty subpar. It was really subpar, in fact. But I think now it's really good. Here we have another dollar store cube, but this time it is a dollar store speed cube. This is basically just a dollar store off brand. Definitely a pretty good, however, again, better alternatives out there. This is a Chi Chi Yuan 4x4. And again, for how inexpensive it is, I really do like the way it performs. I feel like this would probably be one of, if not the best budget cube on the market. But then again, YJ is kind of proving me wrong. And same thing with Moyu. They're basically all working to try and make really good ones. And I feel like this one is eventually just going to get left in the dust. And I have the Aosu anyway. This is the Shengxiao Square 1. This was my very first square one that I got a very long time ago, all the way back in 2018 when I first started. This one, that first square one, it really does not perform that well. I mean, it's okay, but you could totally hear the spring noise every time you move the layer, and it can't corner cut at all. I'm not going to try the corner cutting because I don't want to spend the next hour putting this back together. But basically, this was the very first square one I got, and for what it was, it was okay. I did learn how to solve it eventually. It took me forever, though. I don't think it should have taken me that long. And finally, before we move on to my non-WCA puzzles, this is another Chi Hang Megaminx 
from GE, but this time it is in white. This was actually my first ever Mega Minx, and it was the only Mega Minx I had in my collection for the longest time, not even including the carbon fiber Mega Minx that I have. But this one was a little bit more unstable, a little bit more broken into than my black one, because I've had this for well over two and a half years now, or almost two and a half years now. So you can definitely tell this one's had a little bit of history. And now we are going to move on to my non-WCA line of puzzles. And the first one we have here is, the first set of puzzles we have here, sorry, is going to be sticker bonds. Basically, all these puzzles have very different looking stickers than their normal counterparts, which would make them relatively different of a solve. This first one here is just another old dollar store cube, but this time the stickers are in uh, they have a plaid pattern on them, which makes it pretty unique. It turns really terribly, as you can clearly see. The whole thing is just so scratchy. You can't even finger trick it at all. It can't corner cut. I mean, look at this. But I do think the solve is definitely pretty interesting. And here we have another Rubik's 3x3, but this time with um, design actual designs on the stickers. You see words like immersive on them. I don't really know what any of this is, I just know that my mom gave it to me because it was at her old job. But as you can tell, it is definitely a Rubik's brand, but it's pretty okay. It might turn a little bit better than the last one I had, the last one I showed you, but it's still not that great. And I don't really know the story behind this. Next up on this uh, sort of review, we have a puzzle that I unboxed pretty recently. I wanted to make a video about this, but I kept having camera problems and then my and then the, I lost the footage a long time ago. This is the YJ Blind 3x3 with a Z3 Cubing logo on it, so definitely check him out because I told you so, even though not many people are probably here. Even though at this time, probably not many people are here. This puzzle actually turns pretty well for what it is. I do think the addition of magnets in a version 2 would be nice, just to see a sort of updated version. And... This has special designs on all the faces. As you can see, this has like little bumps on the faces. This one has nothing except the logo. This one has, I don't even know what you would call this on the faces, but it looks like a ring of dots or something. This one has squares, this one has hearts, and this one has five pointed stars. And this was made so you could solve it blindfolded. And personally, this is about as good as it gets for me because Blind solving is going to take me a long time to do, and I would le at least like to be able to say I can solve something blindfolded in the meantime. But that was all the sticker mods that I had. Now we are going to move on to the shape mods that I have. This first one here is yet another Rubik's print. This one came out, I guess, recently-ish. This is the Rubik's, I believe, Bump Cube. It does have colors, and it is basically the exact same as a Mirror Cube. It just has the stickers on it, so... That would make it pretty similar to an actual Rubik's Cube, so it is still pretty easy to solve. The pieces are literally just the exact same color. The solve is no different. However, the shaping, it makes it a little bit awkward to grip, but at the same time, it is not that bad. I actually do think this is a fun collector's edition to have, but... There's also some better ones out there. I promise this is the last Rubik's brand I have for a while. This is the Rubik's Void Cube, something that probably a lot of people have in their collections, or at least a version of a Void Cube. But basically, the gimmick behind a Void Cube is there are no springs in this puzzle because there is no core in this puzzle and there are no centers. So when you're trying to solve it, it can actually create a sort of parity where uh, two edges would be would switch around and you normally would get that on a 4x4 or a square one but because there are no centers on the 3x3 you could get that and that means that you basically have to resolve the entire middle layer by moving each edge piece into the slot next to it and then you have to solve the top layer again it's pretty easy to figure out it's pretty easy to figure out how you do it once you do know how to do it but at the same time once you are basically stuck with that it's pretty difficult to figure out, but once you do figure it out, it is not that bad. Oh my goodness, I, need to, I really need to speed this up. This one, this is the uh, Mefford Ghost Cube. This is one of the more tricky puzzles that I have in my collection. It is among one of the hardest puzzles to solve in the entire community, and for good reason. 
as you can see, every single sticker on the Ghost Cube is white, on this version at least, and every piece is shaped completely differently. So the real challenge of this puzzle is just finding out what piece goes where, but it is pretty obvious to tell which pieces are edges and which are corners and which are centers. As you can see, this is a center, these are corners, and these are edges. And on the middle layer, these two are centers and this is an edge. And once you have solved this a few times, it does not become that terrible. What you have to do in order to even get it scrambled, you have to offset these layers and then you can turn it like so. But overall, it's a very difficult puzzle for beginners. I definitely would recommend having a Ghost Cube. It is definitely a classic. There might be better ones than a Mefferts. However, the Mefferts was the first one that I got, and I am not going to regret that. This is the Mefferts Mall Cube, another one, another Mefferts shape mod, but this one's also kind of a sticker mod, and this one is basically based off of colorful Sudoku. I'm not, I'm gonna try to make this fast, but basically no color can have two different pieces on any one face. So you can see there's a yellow center, there cannot be another yellow piece. This one has a red edge, and that is shared with this edge. There cannot be red anywhere else on this face, despite having more red edges elsewhere. So if I make one turn like that, it is no longer salt because now there are two red pieces and two yellow pieces on this face. There is now two purple pieces and two blue pieces. And there are now two black pieces, two white pieces, two green, and two orange. So that means I would have to make one more turn and now it is solved. So the tricky part is just finding, up, finding out what the actual solution is. But at the same time, once you have memorized it like I have, it's not that bad. Okay, now we're getting into the shape mods that are a little bit less obscure. Or maybe not. This is the Lanlan Lan six axis curvy rhombohedron, very similar to the Dian Shang blade cube, which I don't have. But basically, it does turn very, very smoothly. And this one is a little bit trickier to solve than a normal three by three because some of these edges don't really look like edges. The corners don't look like corners at all, except for these two. And the centers can be rotated 90 degrees. So if it is rotated 90 degrees or 180 degrees away from where it is supposed to be. It is not in fact solved and you have to do a very special algorithm to fix it. It's not that difficult to solve actually and there are easy ways to prevent the center orientation and the 180 degree center orientation which you might or which you may or may not end up with at the end of this is not that hard to deal with. You just have to do this sort of move five times. Here we have the Calvin's Puzzle Inverted House Cube made by uh, Nathan Wilson. We have a sheet mod from Calvin's Puzzle that is basically in the shape of a house, basically. And it is very fun to solve. I do really like solving on this. It's been a while since I did it, though, because I've had other ones to look at. But basically, this one is a little bit trickier to solve because it is basically a fissured house cube, except for all the except for these I believe six or seven pieces are all normal. So these could be flipped, these are rotated, and this one could also be rotated. But it is still very fun to solve. This is the Calvin's Puzzle Inverse Cutter Cube, I believe it's called. And basically what you had to do in order to scramble this one up is you can see I have already offset the middle layer by 45 degrees, and the top and bottom layers are fissured. Basically, you have to offset the middle layer by 45 degrees, and then you are able to freely turn the puzzle. So you cannot turn it like this. You can still turn these layers just fine because they are not obstructed, but no other layer can turn like that until you do this. Here is the Calvin's Puzzle Troy 3D Star or Dueling Tetra. This is one of those that I don't really care for solving too much. However, it is definitely very fun to look at, though it does not turn nearly as well as my last two that I got. And it is also pretty tricky to solve because there can be two of the same edge on each side. And also every center now needs orientation, but it is pretty clear to, to find out what pieces is. Well. This is the Z twisted three by three, basically a knockoff of the original Calvin's puzzle, which I never got. And basically it is a three by three that has been twisted. So that means these edges could now have flit and these could also have orientation like on a Fisher cube but it doesn't really make the solve any more different. Oddly enough, it actually can never shapeshift past its original dimensions. So like the like if this was one bar, it would always stay between that one bar because there's no extensions on this piece. And 
really they kept the top and bottom faces pretty much exactly the same. But it is still very fun to solve. It is very interesting to see something like this. Here we have the YJ Axis Cube version 2, actually. I got this a very long time ago, back in 2018, and as you can see, it doesn't really turn the best out of every puzzle I have, but it is still very fun to solve. This might have been revolutionary because it's really unclear which pieces are what, but these are basically corners, these are edges, and of course these two are centers. It's very difficult to tell what's what in this picture on this puzzle until you manage to wrap your head around it. This is the Mofang Jiaoshi Pandora Cube, also with a Z3 cubing logo, and basically what this is is a differently shaped actual 3x3. It is still a cube, it does not shape shift when you turn it, but basically this center has been enlarged a little bit, so it is a little bit bigger than normal. It's basically like a skew, but you added centers to it. So the centers are a little bit bigger and the corners overlap the edges and they're at almost touching each other. So that definitely does make it very difficult to grip. And this one in particular is a little bit sluggish, but I still really do like it. I think this is definitely very fun to mess around with and it's very fun to solve too. So if you want to, you can check this one out. I'm only now coming to the realization that I've been filming for at least 30 minutes at this point and I haven't even gone through half my collection. So this is gonna take me a while. But next up we have the Chi Mirror Cube. This one also has a little bit of history as you can see. These stickers are a little bit scratched up and there was actually one corner piece that is a little bit janky on this one, as you can see, because the uh, piece actually snapped off of its extension, but we got it fixed. And I think for how smooth this is, I think the mirror cube is definitely the way to go in terms of classics. This is one of those classic three by three shape mods that I think everybody should have in their collection. However, this one is a little bit beat up, but I have had it for over two and a half years, almost two and a half years. This is the Chi Fisher Cube, another one of those classic 3x3 shape mods that I believe everybody should have. I think this one is one of the best turning shape mods out of my entire collection, and it's also pretty recent for me. This is one that I got pretty recently in my last video, and it, I, in reality, I got this like right before school started, and it is now basically the new year at this point. But... <laughs> Basically, this is another one of those classics that I recommend everybody has in their collection. Great for beginners. And here we have another classic 3x3 shape mod. This is the Chi Windmill Cube, another one that I recommend people having in their collection. It is a little bit different to solve than the Fisher Cube, however, it is very, it is still decently easy to solve. Another one of those that is great in any collection. This is the Chi Concave DNA Cube. This one doesn't really look like DNA, however, Every piece has this gorgeous lattice pattern on it. It is still very easy to solve. It solves the exact same way, but it turns so good. This is one of the best performing puzzles in my collection, just for how much of a novelty item it is. You can definitely see all the different colors. It is so beautiful. I just really like the way this was designed. Yeah. All right, now the shape mods that I'm going over are basically ones that have only one color, basically. I don't really know how to describe it. But this is the green YJ Apple Cube. They also have a red one, which I used to have, but then it broke. This one is a pretty old puzzle. It doesn't really turn the best. I have definitely a better performing Apple than this, which you will see pretty recently. And I did get this over two years ago, so it is pretty understandable that this would be pretty old. But basically, the Apple Cube is another one of those shape mods that is very easy to solve. It is all one color, but the the shape of an apple is pretty easy to figure out, even though these centers can have an orientation, so definitely be careful. And moving on to the other apple cube I have that I got over a year ago, over one year ago. This is the Fonshin apple cube, part of a set of fruit. I do not have the full set. I would like to get the full set, though. Basically, this is a... This is basically just the exact same thing, except you can actually see a little bit of white on the inside. It's a little bit more like an apple, and it definitely turns a lot better than it used to be. Here we have the Function Lemon 3x3, which is, again, very similar to the Apple Cube. It definitely turns better than the uh, the other green apple from YJ, and it's kind of hard to turn looking through the camera. But basically, this is another one of those that is very simple to solve. The lemon in general just isn't that bad even though I normally don't like lemons. And for some reason, they decided to make a banana out of a two by two by three. This is another part of the fruit set, and it's the only part of the fruit set that isn't a three by three. I know for a fact, because I know there's a peach, a pear, and an orange that I do not have. 
they're all three by threes. The two that I just talked about are three by threes. This is a two by two by three, so it is very easy to solve. Po possibly even easier than a two by two, but just the fact that there is a puzzle out of a banana makes me so happy. This one doesn't really have, this one has actually three colors. This is the Shangshao Phoenix Cube. I know my name is Phoenix, but this puzzle probably was not made for me. However, I still really do enjoy it. And it's basically the exact same thing as a Fisher Cube, except it has a little bit curvier cuts. You can see the corners are a little bit different. The middle layer is definitely pretty thick. The corner stalks are very skinny, or these... Well, the middles are pretty thick. The outers are a little bit... Um, they're, they're definitely a little bit skinny. And it only has three colors, so it basically has blue, red, and then green. It does make it relatively easy to solve. Definitely another good one for beginners. It's not that classic as just a normal Fisher Cube. And moving on, we have another version of the Phoenix Cube. This is the Phoenix Megaminx, also from Shangshao. And it is quite a bit more difficult to solve than a Megaminx because now everything requires center orientation. There are some instances where you could have these edges flipped, and that means you would have a sort of parity-ish on this top layer. And it is definitely harder to turn. It's harder to grip. And the bottom layer is just okay, but the top layer actually does move pretty decently. This one's not quite as fun to solve as the original Phoenix Cube, but it is still very fun to solve because it's something new. It's You don't really see something that, that would be a Fissured-ish Megaminx. And here we have a 5x5 shape mod from Calvin's Puzzle. This one didn't really fit into any specific category. It does not right now. I also would like to get the full set of these. This is basically the Tony Fisher... 5x5 five five mods from Calvin's Puzzle. This is the ball in a cube. One of the most fun puzzles to solve in my collection. However, it is still 5x5 five five made out of a 4x4. Four four. Basically, this is what happens when you expose the core of a 4x4. Four, four four. It is actually a 5x5 five five on the inside. And it is definitely very fun to solve. Kind of tricky to wrap your head around, especially in terms of alignment with this middle layer. But at the same time, it is not that bad. Not that great for beginners. I'd say you'd have to be kind of an intermediate cuber if you wanted to try this one out. Now here we are moving into my Scube Shape Mods. This is the Mefferts Scube Extreme, also by Tony Fisher. And I really do like this. I think Mefferts did a really good job with this. You can definitely tell it is very clicky. And basically the difference between this Scube and most is that now centers actually have orientation. And you normally don't see that on a Scube. This is also the first cube you'll actually see in this video because I want to get the Alia in so bad, but I don't have that right now. I would hopefully want to get it sometime in the next week or so. But basically, this was something that I got, once again, over two years ago. As you can definitely tell, the white stickers are a little bit scratched up. But for how well this performs, this is a Mefford's puzzle, and it actually performs really good for something that isn't even meant to be a competition item. Normally, Mefferts puzzles are just okay, but I think this is one of the best performing puzzles I have in my collection. Definitely one of my favorites. All right, I really need to speed this up. Here we have the Mefferts Scube Ultimate, which is basically the exact same thing as the Scube Extreme, so the difficulty is about the same, but now it's difficult to tell the color scheme apart because now it is a dodecahedron. It is a little bit more difficult than the Scube Extreme, but at the same time, not that bad, and the interesting story behind this is I got this puzzle literally one day before I got the Scube Extreme. So I got this one like on a Saturday. Literally the day after that, I got the Scube Extreme. That's kind of funny to me. This is the Moyu Mofeng Jiaoshi Fisher Scube, another one of my favorite puzzles. This one I got last year for Christmas. I was not a YouTuber at that time, but I really do like this. I think this is one of my favorite puzzles. And just the fact that there is a Fisher Scube made by Nathan Wilson, that's kind of, this was made by Nathan Wilson. That's kind of intriguing to me because we could definitely Fisher a lot of things now. And as the Phoenix Megaminx has hinted, we might be able to Fisher Megaminxes in the future. This is the Mofeng Jiaoshi container puzzle, very similar to the Fisher Scube, except it has been slightly pulled apart. And now every piece, except for these centers in the middle layer, have only one color on them. These centers are still two colors, but now there is basically no indication of which side the corners go on, and that can create a sort of parity-ish where, like, you solve the corners on the white layer and everything on the other layer is flipped. A little bit tougher, but still not that bad. 
though at first glance it is kind of difficult to tell what it is supposed to be. This is the Meilong Double Scoob, also from Moyu in the Mofang Jiaoshi series, and with most corners, on three of its axes, it is it behaves exactly like a normal scoob should, but as you can see, there's these holes in the centers, and if you turn this axis right here, the centers actually do get left behind. So as you can see, this green center got left behind, and this red center is has been moved. And that does make it very difficult to solve. However, again, once you figure out the solution, it's not that bad. That can really be said for everything. Moving on, we have now the line of gear puzzles that I have. And I have quite a few of them, actually. This one right here is the original Mefford's Gear Ball. Once again, I got this about two years ago. This was my very first gear puzzle. And for what it is, I absolutely love it. I think this is one of the best turning gear puzzles on the market. I still would like to get the gear shift and gear cube, but I think for the Mefrance gear ball, I actually really do like it. It is a little bit easier to solve than normal 3x3. It looks like it should be harder, but it is quite a bit easier as many puzzlers, like as many cubers like me would know. This is the Lanlan gear hexadecahedron, which is basically just a sort of truncated octahedron, as you can see. These gold stickers are basically where you just cut the corners off of an octahedron, and it does not turn quite as well, but it is definitely a little bit more difficult of a solving experience. Just don't pinch your fingers. But basically for what this is, it is definitely pretty interesting. All the None of the corners really have any orientation, so you basically do have to remember the color scheme or else it, you might have a bit of a struggle fest trying to solve this. Oh, I still got a long way to go. This is the Gear Hexagonal Die Pyramid, also from Lanlan. This one is definitely a little bit trickier to solve than that because you, once again, kind of have to remember the color scheme quite a bit, and it's not that easy to do. But if you do remember the color scheme, it is definitely a very fun solve. I don't think I have really any more gear puzzles like this besides the uh, hexadecahedron, but definitely pretty fun. Maybe not the most worth it checking out as opposed to more gear cubes that I will get to in the future, but... Definitely pretty cool. This is the Landland Gear Honeycopter, another Landland Gear puzzle, and this one functions pretty much exactly the same as a normal gear cube, except now there are no centers. It is a little bit easier, it is very easy to solve, and you might have a sort of instance where four edges on both faces are flips, and like four edges in the middle layer stay the same. That's basically the exact same thing as what you can get on a normal gear cube where you might have like the insides of the edges flipped. Since there are no insides to the edges, the entire edge gets flipped instead. But it is still very easy to deal with. This is a Calvin's Puzzle Gear Scube. This was actually the limited edition red version that I got out of Puzzle Crate, a Gear Scube. It's very interesting to solve. Very fun, actually. However, you can get some pretty serious lockups on this, so don't turn it too aggressively. All right, now we're moving into some of my favorite gear puzzles that we have. This is the Chi Gear Cube. This is a gear cube made by Chi, which is so much higher quality than what we've been going through. Normally, gear cubes are pretty subpar in terms of their turning. This one turns phenomenally. It's so smooth. I really do enjoy it. Even turning it is satisfying. And you can definitely see this actually has tiles instead of stickers. And if I hold it in the light right here, you can see the tiles are matte, the black plastic is glossy. And here we have another gear puzzle from Chi. This one you have not seen yet. This is the gear sphere from Chi. This one is basically very similar to the Mefford's gear ball. It even has this sort of ridges here to help improve your grip a little bit. However, I still really enjoy solving this one. This one I got pretty a uh, little bit after I got the other one, the last one rather. But another one that I really like having in my collection. Definitely more than worth checking out. I would recommend the entire gear collection from Chi. And we're not even halfway done. Or we are halfway done now. Now, here's the other puzzle that I got in the unboxing that I posted uh, recently. That sh I should have posted a long time ago. This is the Chi gear cylinder or gear barrel. This one is once again very fun to solve. Just as easy as the last one. This all is the exact same as a normal gear cube. This is the final gear cube in, the, in my collection that I want to talk about, and the final gear cube in Chi's collection, the Chi Gear Pyraminx, which is very interesting. It solves very similarly to the Gear Cube. However, 
the actual solve itself is much more difficult than a normal gear cube because on a gears cube this would normally be your center these have orientation on this puzzle and that makes it very difficult to deal with i'm lucky this came with an instruction booklet next up that we're going to be talking about are all of my cuboid puzzles i've got four of these let's just go ahead and speed through it because i've been recording for literally 50 minutes and i still have a long way to go let's go so this first one that we have here is the two, two by two by three. So as you can see, two layers on one axis, two layers on another axis, three layers on the last axis. It is very easy to solve. Another good one for beginners. This is probably about as good as a two by two by three could get. This is another Rubik's brain puzzle. This is the Rubik's super floppy three by three by one or one by three by three. Basically, it only has one layer, but it can actually do some pretty decent shape shifting for how how little pieces it has and the reason it works is because it's kind of hard to see but these, there's these internal pieces that allow it to turn at 90 degrees and still remain functional just like that this is the chi three by three by two which is basically the exact same thing as the two but as the super floppy except we now have one extra layer actually we're not supposed to do that but basically this is another relatively simple to solve this is the only one that I actually didn't really know how to solve for a little bit, but then I looked at the instructions and now I do know how to solve it without the instructions. And the last cuboid that we have before we move on to my two edge turning puzzles, we have the Wit Eden 3 by 3 by 7 So there's three layers on one side, three layers on another side, and seven layers on the last axis. So it is very fun to solve. I have solved it a few times even though it took me a while to learn. Yeah, it straight up took me a year and a half to learn. But basically, you can turn basically every one of these layers individually. And then there's another thing that you could do is if you turn one of the outer layers 90 degrees, you can then keep turning it like that because this is an odd turning into an odd. You can, of course, make some crazy shape shifting when doing this. Yeah, this video in reality is taking a lot longer to film than I thought it would. Hopefully it's not 15 minutes long in the editing. Hopefully it's only about 30. This we have is the uh, Lan Lan Curvy Copter. Basically this is an edge turning puzzle where normally the puzzle I have would turn on the corners. This one turns on the edges or the, or the faces. This one is an edge turning puzzle and basically it does make it about as hard to solve as a three by three if you don't do the jumbling, but if you do do the jumbling, it definitely does make the solve a lot harder because you can switch orbits and all that. But I don't really solve it with jumbling, mainly because I don't really want to dive too deep into that. And my other edge turning puzzle that I have is arguably not really an edge turning puzzle. This is the Lan Lan face turning rhombic dodecahedron or the Rua puzzle, R-U-A puzzle. Basically, it's a rhombic dodecahedron that can turn on the faces 180 degrees just like that. But it is actually very difficult to solve because you have these internal triangle pieces to deal with. And actually uh, moving those around is pretty complicated. You do have to do a double jumble move, which I'm not going to show you because I'm trying to speed things up. But basically, this is a very difficult puzzle to solve. I do know how to solve this. It's probably one of the hardest ones I have in my collection. Now we're going to move on to the corner turning puzzles, and this first one we have is the Chi Ivy Cube. Very simple to solve, very trivial. There's literally only six moving pieces and four corners that can rotate. It is very easy to solve. It's basically the cubic version of a Pyraminx, which I have not shown yet. Shame on me. And moving right along, we have another Chi puzzle that is pretty much functionally identical to the Ivy Cube. This is the... Uh, David Pitcher Chi six spot cube. I almost forgot the name. There we go. But basically, it's the exact same thing. But if it makes any difference, you can see there are ball bearings on the inside, like so. And I think it just looks a lot better. You don't really see circles like this on a puzzle like this. And we have yet again another puzzle that is functionally identical to the Ivy Cube. This is the Chi, uh, not Chi, YJ Yeet Ball. Yes, it is actually called the Yeet Ball for some reason. And I will leave a link to that video in the I will leave a link to its backstory in the description. Oh. 
This is the Fangxi Limb Cube 2x2 Transform Pyraminx Octahedron 2. It's actually not a 2x2. It is a face-turning octahedron that is very trivial to solve because there are only 12 moving parts, and these corners here don't really have any orientation. So it is very easy to solve, though there are definitely two edges that have the same color, just like so. And now we're moving on to the more, substan the more standard corner-turning puzzles. This is the Moyu Ready Cube, very similar to a Dino Cube, which I also would like to get, but basically it turns on the corners and now there are eight axes of rotation and there are also corners that you need to take into consideration. It is very intuitive to solve and I really just like this. I've had this for well over two years now and it is still to this day one of my favorite puzzles just because of how quiet it is, how smooth it is. This is a very high quality puzzle, one that I would 100% recommend everybody has. However, if you don't plan on getting one of those, you can always get the Yushin 8 Petals Cube, which is even, which is really even better. It's not quite as quiet, but it is a, little, a lot more smooth, and the turns also click into place. There are magnets, basically, in this puzzle, and I think... The magnets definitely do make a huge difference. On the green side, they're not that good, but on the blue side, they are really good. And you can kind of feel the magnets rattling around if I turn this one. But it is definitely another high-quality puzzle, the only Yushin puzzle I have in my collection. The next puzzle that we have here is the Moyu Barrel Ready Cube. Basically, this is just the exact same thing as the Ready Cube, except the color scheme is a little bit different. They're in these sort of slanted stripes-ish looking thing. And they are now... Um, it is now in the shape of a barrel, which makes it a little bit tougher to solve, I guess. But at the same time, it's not that bad. But you can definitely make some pretty crazy shape-shifting happen with this. Here we have the Moyu, also Mofeng Jiaoshi, Ready Minx. This is another one of my favorite puzzles in my collection. I really do like having this around because it's basically an entirely new solving. It's basically the exact same solving experience as the Ready Cube, but... It's a dodecahedron, and that makes it really a lot more fun, and it is so satisfying to see the solved state. Just the fact that you even got there it is a pretty decent challenge, but you have probably the most satisfying solved state of all time. One that I would definitely recommend checking out if you have not already. This is the Lanlan Mosaic Cube, another one of those corner turning puzzles, but this time we have the same sort of ready cube style cut, but this time there is an extra layer to it. And that makes it look a lot more complicated, but it actually is still very easy to solve. It's one of those puzzles that is a lot easier to solve than it looks. Here we have another Landland puzzle. This is the Rex Cube. It is basically like the Ivy Cube, except there are now eight axes of rotation. And now we have a lot more pieces to deal with. But you know how to flip edges on a pyramid, so you basically know exactly how to solve this. It is basically one of those where once you figure out the solution, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Moving right along, we have what would be a set of dodecahedron puzzles. Unfortunately, I only have this one, the Shangxiao Kilominx. Another Shangxiao puzzle, but this time it's much higher quality than the, uh, the square one that I showed you. But not quite as good as the Phoenix Cube. Maybe a little bit better than the Phoenix Megaminx. But for what this is, it's so smooth. Basically, a lot of Shangxiao's Minx puzzles are actually really good. Much better than... Something like QJ or, uh, what is it, MF8? But basically, what these are, it's just a dodecahedron version of a 2x2, and that's really intriguing to me. Definitely very fun to solve. I really do enjoy having this. Okay, now we are moving on to, um, the, we're moving on to close to the last sets of puzzles that I have, and we are moving right along into the tetrahedrons. So this first one I have is a souvenir that my dad brought me last year from his trip to Paris based off of the Louvre Pyramid. And basically it is the exact same thing as a Pyraminx, which does not turn that great. But then again, this is just a souvenir. But at the same time, I actually really do enjoy having this. I think it is definitely something different to the table. And now you can kind of see how well a Pyramid, a Pyraminx moves. Just how it does move. Hopefully this video is not an hour long because right now the recording is. This is the Chi Master Pyraminx, another one of my favorite puzzles. I got this last year before I started my YouTube channel 
and basically it is a pyraminx as you can see except as you can see it has centers and it also has an extra layer as well as the tips and it makes it a little bit more challenging it's very similar to solving the mosaic cube except it is a little bit more challenging because now there are only four axes of rotation but it's still not that hard to solve here we have the Shangxiao Master Morphix, another very high quality puzzle from Shangxiao. I really do enjoy having this. I think it looks great. I think the sticker, the stickerless shades look really nice. And basically, it is just a tetrahedral version of a 3x3. Three three. So if I turn it 90 degrees, you can kind of see this is your center, these are your edges, and these are your corners. It's overall a little bit more difficult to solve than a 3x3, three three, but at the same time, it is not that bad. Which is something I cannot say about this next one. Here we have the Shangxiao 6x6 Master Morphix. I got this once again last year. Basically, it's a tetrahedral version of a 6x6, so it has six layers. And they made a 7x7 Master Morphix, which is pretty interesting, to say the least. I would like to get the full Morphix collection in the future, now that we have gone all the way to 7, but right now I only have the 3 and the 6. I have solved this a few times, and let me tell you, it is definitely... So, you're going to be spending a long time sol solving this one. This is the Land Land Clover Pyraminx. Once again, it is another Land Land puzzle, but this time it is a little bit different. As you can see, this one has two axes of rotation on each individual edge. So, a tetrahedron has six edges, there are two axes of rotation on each edge, there are overall 12 axes of rotation in total on this puzzle. And it is decently easy-ish to solve. Maybe if you don't know how to do this, it would be a little bit more difficult. But once you figure it out, it's not that bad. And here we have another puzzle very similar to that. We have the Lan Lan Star Pyraminx, which is basically the exact same thing as the Clover Pyraminx. Except now these corners are not covered up by whatever pieces these are. But it is pretty much the exact same thing, but now we just have to take corners into consideration. Moving right along though, we have another puzzle that is very similar to this. This is the Land Land Four Corners Cube, which is basically the exact same thing as the Star Pyraminx, but it is just in a cube shape. So these are the corners, these are your sort of axes of rotation, these are whatever center-ish piece would be, and these are basically your edges. It is the exact same thing as a Clover Pyraminx, except as the Land Land Star Pyraminx, sorry, but it is a little bit more difficult to wrap your head around how it moves, and I have seen a couple people confused by something else similar to this. And our last tetrahedral puzzle before we move on to all of my hybrid puzzles, we have the Leifun Ghost Pyraminx. Pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. But basically, this is a ghosted version of a Jang's Pyraminx, and as you saw from my Ghost Cube, a ghosted puzzle is quite a bit more difficult because every piece is the same color, and every piece is a different shape. So you're solving based off of shape and not color. And once again, you do have to offset it to get a turn going. But this one in particular is actually very fun. So because if you think about solving it like a, a pyraminx, it's actually really easy. But I have seen someone like J.R. Cuber try to solve it like a skew, and he had a little bit of complications with it. So if you solve it like a Jing's pyraminx, it's actually not that bad. Once you get to the center orientation, which is also not terrible to deal with. So moving on right moving right along now, we're going into all of my hybrid puzzles that I have. I've got eight of these here. We're almost done. I have been doing this for over an hour. I just really would like to finish this up very soon, but I still have a little bit of a ways to go. But these in particular I have ordered from Easiest to Harvest. So we're moving right along to the easiest hybrid puzzle that I have. This is the Chi Coin Pyraminx. This one is basically this one turns on the corners, but as you can see, there's also these circles on each face that you can rotate independently. So you can basically turn them like that, rotate one of the pieces out of the way, and then turn it back, and you will have switched two pieces around. It is really a kind of three cycle, but this one is very easy to solve because basically none of the real pe none of the pieces really have any orientation besides the corners. And we ha here we have a puzzle very similar to that that I got about a year prior to the other one prior to the last one that I got. This is the G Ancient Coin Cube. It is a little bit more expensive, but it does come in a fancy case. But basically, this one is pretty much the exact same thing as the Coin Pyraminx, except now it is a cube and there are twice as many pieces. On the Coin Pyraminx, there are 12 pieces. Here, there are 24. 
moving right along, we have another puzzle that is a little bit more difficult, but at the same time not as difficult as another hyper puzzle that I'm going to talk about. This is the Moyu Mofeng Jiaoshi Meilong Polaris Cube. And this one is very confusing to try and figure out how it turns, but basically what you have to do is you need to offset all of these corners, just like that, and once six of them are offset, you can have two offset on opposite sides, then you can turn it through the middle like a skew. It's basically a skew shape mod, but with a little bit more... It's basically the combination of a skew and a mosaic cube with a little bit more confusing method on how you actually turn it, but because of those real analogies, I don't think it's as difficult to solve as a few other hyper puzzles that I have in my collection. This is the Fangxi Limb Cube Venom Cube, which is something that I got in April 2019 out of my puzzle crate with the Barrel Ready Cube. And basically, this is a combination of a 2x2. Two two. So you can see it has 2x2 two two turns just like that, but you can also turn these little triangle pieces on the edges, and then you can keep moving them around like that. That does make it pretty, that does add an extra layer of difficulty to, to the solve. And in general, a two by two in general is quite a bit more difficult to solve than a skew. Not really, but just because of the extra layer of complexity, it's not that difficult to solve, not that bad, but at the same time, it's also not that easy. So definitely does take some thinking. All right, moving on, we have the Chi Pentacle Cube. This is one of my favorite puzzles in my collection. And it is probably one of the hardest to actually turn. So as you can see, it really doesn't look like anything should turn, but you can also move these sort of star faces just like that. And if you line four of them up just like this, then you can actually turn it like a three by three. It adds a, really an extra layer of complexity, not really one that anybody would want, but it is definitely good to solve if you are a patient cubert like I am. I really do have the patience to solve puzzles like this that I know are going to take a while for a very specific reason, but this one in particular, I really do enjoy. I've been wanting to get something like this for a while, and now I finally got it. I got it shortly after the Venom Cube, but it's still definitely very fun to solve. Moving on, though, we have the YJ Petal Pyramids. This is something I got last year with the Ancient Coin Cube, but basically what this is, is it is just like a normal pyraminx, but you don't have the tips. So you can do normal pyraminx sledgehammer moves like that, but you can also rotate these center faces and they even click into place, which is really, which is really intriguing to me. So you can do something like that and switch the pieces around. And it's actually quite a bit harder to solve than the coin cube, the coin pyraminx and the pentacle cube mainly because there are only three uh, there are only three axes of symmetry on a triangle. The second hardest puzzle that I have in the hybrids collection, we have the Moyu Mofeng Jiaoshi Meilong Maple Leaves Cube. It goes with the Polaris Cube, and this kind of completes the set of Moyu Cube mods that I have. And basically, it is the exact same thing as a Cube, as you can see. So I can do such hammers like that. But it has this sort of lattice-esque pattern on the inside, and if you turn, if you make a half turn like this, you can then turn these faces just like that and switch them around. And that actually does make it take quite a lot longer to solve out of really most of the puzzles that I have. I'm sure some might argue that this is the hardest hyper puzzle I have. I might argue that in the future, but that pretty much is nothing compared to this puzzle that I have right here. This is the Lan Lan Butterflower Cube, which is basically very similar to the a bunch of other puzzles that I talked about. This has basically the inner layer, the outer layer mosaic cube cuts just like that, but you can also turn it on the edges and you can separate the pieces out like that. It makes it quite a bit more complicated than most of the other puzzles that I have, but once you figure out the solving process, it's actually not that bad. So it definitely does take some effort to solve, especially to turn, but this is definitely one of the more fun puzzles that I have in my collection. I would definitely recommend getting this, however, it is relatively pricey. It's about $25 or so. We're finally reaching the end of this. We have about nine puzzles, I mean, 10 puzzles left to talk about. This one we have right here is the first of five carbon fiber puzzles that we have to talk about. This is the Z carbon fiber two by two. Actually, I don't really know the brand, but it's basically a stickerless two by two 
but it has these special carbon fiber stickers like that. The solve is no different, but it definitely does look pretty cool. Here is the carbon fiber three by three that I have also with the special carbon fiber stickers, but this time it actually kind of does have a little bit of a center orientation because these centers could all be rotated incorrectly just like so, but overall it is still decently easy to solve. Here we have the carbon fiber skew. This one also is has the carbon fiber stickers, but this time it is a skew. And I really should have showed you a skew a lot earlier. Sorry, I don't have one. Don't have a normal one, but basically it's the same as a normal skew, but it has carbon fiber stickers. And the next one we have here is the carbon fiber pyraminx. It is basically the exact same thing as a normal pyraminx, but it has the carbon fiber stickers and it actually performs really well for what it is. And then the last carbon fiber puzzle we have here, the more trickiest one, we have the carbon fiber Megaminx. This one is basically the same as the three by three in that it needs the center orientation and it is decently fun to solve. It actually is really fun to solve. And for how high quality of a puzzle this is for something that's not really meant to be speed solved, they did a good job with this. Good job, Z. Now we have the last sort of collection of puzzles that I have. Ones that don't really fall into any specific category yet, kind of like the uh, Calvin's Puzzle Ball in a Cube did, but it will eventually fall into a category. This one we have here is the Calvin's Puzzle Vladdy's Evil Seed Puzzle, which is basically a face-turning trihedron like that. However, this one basically ups the ante by adding a middle layer, center pieces, and it can even shapeshift. This is one of the few puzzles in my collection that I don't know how to solve yet. I would like to learn how to solve this in the future, and I will hope that I will be able to solve it for you guys sometime within the next couple months. This is the very puzzle Lovebird Tupminx, or the 2x2 Tupminx, basically. It's basically what happens when you take an icosahedron or a dodecahedron and you slice off all the corners. This is what you get. It has 32 faces. There are 32 axes of rotation on this puzzle, and basically, it is very... It, is, it does take a while to solve. Basically, these hexagonal faces, you actually have to move them 180 degrees, otherwise you are at risk of fudging some of the layers. But these pentagonal faces, you can move in, I believe it was 72 degree increments, just like that. This next puzzle that I have here doesn't really fall into any specific category, like at all. It's hardly even a twisty puzzle, but it's basically a sort of stress toy, I guess. It's definitely a sort of fidget toy-ish. And you could even consider it to be a puzzle because you can, in fact, turn these pieces and make different designs with them. Like, you can make them all touching like that in a sort of wave pattern. But the way I like to have it is so that they're all in a sort of triangle pattern. And there's only four colors. So, not really a sort of puzzle, but it is definitely fun to just mess around with. This is the Rubik's Impossible 3x3, which is one of the hardest puzzles to, that I have in my collection. This was basically made with stickers that change color. These are lenticular stickers, and that basically means that every sticker has two colors, or most stickers have two colors. Some stickers do not change colors, like this one and all the centers, but basically it makes it very difficult to solve. And if you actually do want to solve this, you really do need to memorize what piece goes where, because as of today, I still have yet to do that, even though I got this only a few days ago. But... Basically, it is very difficult to solve just for what the stickers do to your eyes. And it's not impossible, and some people might argue that it does belong in my sticker mods, but this is special to me, so I'm going to leave it in this category. And last but not least, the 100th puzzle I have in my collection as of wrapping up 2020 and moving into 2021, my original Rubik's 3x3. This was the very first puzzle I got in my collection all the way back in March of 2018, before I even became a series cuber. But this is where it all started. This is where my cubing career started. I, if you would have asked me like a year before then, I would not know how to do this. And now I absolutely know how to do this. And now look at me, I have a collection full of 100 of these. And I really couldn't have gotten anywhere if it weren't for this one three by three, one that I'm never going to sell. But with all that said and done, that is the last puzzle that I have to talk about. And this is going to be a long video. I did not want this to be this long. I was planning on making this only a 30 minute video. And as I'm recording this, I've been recording for almost an hour and 20 minutes at this point. 
So I really do hope you enjoy this video. I put a lot of time and effort into this. This took a lot longer than I thought I would, but hopefully you guys enjoy it for the people who do see it. Hopefully you do enjoy this. And if you did enjoy this, make sure to send your feedback on me or send your feedback to me about what you thought of this video. Did you like or dislike it? Make sure to click the like button if you did like it. And if you didn't like this video, that's okay. But if you did like this video and want to see more, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on that notification bell so you do not have to miss the eventual time lapse of me solving all of these puzzles that I will be recording for you sometime next week. Hopefully. I My goal is to get this out by the end of Saturday, January 2nd. So I am going to start editing this pretty soon. I'm going to make sure that my other one is uploaded first. Though, if you do enjoy this video, definitely leave a like and leave a comment telling me what you thought of this video and just some other funny things you might have noticed. Well, I guess I'll see you guys next time. So until then, make sure to have a good one. I will see you next time. Peace.